best of pals. Me and my pony, we love all the gals. Me and my pony, we love to ride along. Listening to the coyotes and a prairie song, oh pony boy, oh pony boy. You're the one for me, you're my pride and joy. Me and my pony, we're the best of friends. We'll see each other through till the bitter end. Me and my pony, we love to go to town. And watch the people as they stand around. Me and my pony, we love to round the strays. Then when our work comes through, we love to hit the hay. Oh, pony boy, oh, pony boy. You're the one for me, you're my pride and joy. Me and my pony, we're the best of friends. We'll see each other through till the bitter end. Hey, Davy, look at him over there. Whenever Alibi gets to kicking up the dirt, you can bet he's fretting about something. I sure am. What are we doing here, anyhow? Cow hands on the Box C Ranch. And what for? Because Dallas Conroy invited us, that's why. And she must have had a very good reason. Handsome. Nobody invites us any place unless they're in some kind of trouble. And we ain't seen none yet. Well, we might. And you can bet there's a lot going on around here that we don't know about. And if anything does happen, we want to be right here on Box C Ranch. Well, you can hang around here if you want to, but I'm going out and find something to do before I break a toe kicking up that dirt you're talking about. <laughs> Kind of fidgety, ain't he? <laughs> yeah, he gets kind of itchy. Sounds like trouble's found us. You're not a kidding. Come on. Good shot when he got the proper sort of a target. Well, is the war over? Can we just finish it, Della? Then I reckon one of you gay caballeros can drive to the station with me. I will. I will. You boys ought to get together oftener. I had a wire from Dad. He's arriving on the morning train. Well, Dave, while Dallas and I are in town, maybe you and Alibi better round up those strays. Come on, Dallas. <laughs> Just you're getting mighty fast on the reef.
Any trouble, Alibi? Yeah, some fellows rode past me like a cannonball. Before my morning's work. Been some sort of trouble brewing. I meant to ride over and have a talk with your boss, Conroy. Well, he's getting home today. Well, then I'll come over and see him right now. Looks like these strays are rounded up are straight again. So I'll ride into Box C with you. Come on. Conroy, you're lucky to have the range busters to help you. Yes. My daughter got them to come here and help us out for a while. She met them in San Antonio last year. They're a nice bunch of fellows, Richards. As I was saying, since I started selling beef to the Army, I've run into all sorts of trouble, such as herds being mysteriously stampeded, 10 or 15 head cut out at a time and disappeared. I even found one of the water holes poisoned. There's a war going on in Europe, and they're aiming to get us mixed up into it. Don't mind Tad, Mr. Richards. He did a couple of hitches in the cavalry, and he still thinks he's war-minded. By the way, the boys have been shooting at Mussolini and Hitler the last few days. You'd think we was already into it. Maybe Tad's right, Tom. Uh, you was away fixing up some business with the government, wasn't you? Yes. I'm going to ship 400 head of horses as soon as possible. Where are you shipping, Tom? You'd never guess. To the Philippine Islands. And I'm going to have to send my own crew along. It'll be quite a trip for the boys. I imagine. Here we are, right here. Just a dot on the map. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. And pay no attention to him. Wait till you get him on board. Fellas, here's where we'll probably take the boat. Where's that? Galveston. Oh, Galveston. Galveston. Guys, that's a long way from home. Well, do you think that's far? Look at this. About 6,000 miles of water to cross before we reach Manila. Hello. Oh, hello, hello Alice. Alice. I hope you boys won't be seasick all the way across those 6,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they only get lovesick. <laughs> Here's a long wait, Dallas, but if the cavalry needs horses in the Philippines, we'll get them there. I guess you'll be glad to get away from the ranch for a few months. Oh, no, Dallas, we don't want to go. Oh, we oh, want I mean, to go, all right, but I we don't want to... Well, make up your mind. Like well, make up your mind. Is this the spot we're heading for, Dusty? Oh, no, Alibi. Here it is. This is the island of Bali. Well, couldn't we stop off there for a couple of days? Why? Get me? When I get a line on this trouble, I'll be letting you know. Oh, it'll probably turn out to be some disgruntled cowboy trying to get even for something that never happened. I hope that's all it is. Hey. Looks like we're going to have an official visitor. Yes. Come in. Howdy, Captain. Are you Mr. Conroy? Yes. Well, you're from the 4th Cavalry. That's right, Anders is my name. Well, I'm glad to know you indeed. And this is my neighbor, Mr. Ken Richards. How do you do, Mr. Richards? Hi. I did two hitches in the 4th myself. Oh, really? Yes. Company D. Well, good. And the toughest, meanest top kick in the entire outfit. <laughs> my friend, Tad Tilson the slowest and dumbest bugler in any outfit. Oh. <laughs> I've been assigned to look over some horses you're sending overseas. Well, you work fast, Captain. I only got back from Washington today myself. We need fast action these days. I'll call my foreman. Oh, Dusty. I'd like to have you meet Captain Anders. Dusty King. How do you do, Mr. King? Captain. I've come to check over Mr. Conroy's horses. They're over in the north section. When would you like to look them over? Just as soon as possible. That's fine. I'll saddle up and be with you pronto. Right. Captain seemed pleased with his inspection of the horses. Well, he ought to be. Conroy's got one of the finest herds I've ever seen. Wonder when we'll start driving him to the loading corral. I imagine we'll find out this afternoon when we meet Conroy down at the railroad yard. Well, I guess we better be going, Davy. Something wrong? Well, it's those tire tracks, Davy. You know, this is about the spot that Alibi said he had the trouble with the truck. That's right. 
Maybe we can find out where they're heading. Well, we got a little time. Let's do it. Okay. Wait a minute, Davy. Don't you believe in signs? Sure I do, but we're still going to find out where these tracks lead to. Well, all right, have it your way, but we haven't got too much time. I guess they really meant it when they hung out that sign. We better get into action. You said it. Let's go back and try and pick up the trail. Oh, no, we haven't got time now. We're not going to let him throw lead at us and get away with it. Now, don't forget, we promised Conroy to meet him at the railroad yard. You go meet Conroy, and I'll try and follow him alone. Well, now, look, Davy, that shipment for Conroy is really important. All right, you win. Take that hot head of yours and put it under a cool shower. <laughs> Come on, let's get back to the railroad yard and get that horse business over with. Right. Conroy. Where are the boys? Well, they'll be along a little later. After we made arrangements with the railroad, they stopped to spot the loading cars. Where are you heading for? We'll try to round up those trays I lost the other day. Well, I hope you have luck. We'll be loading next week. A big job, herding 400 horses all the way to the Philippines. You'll be tickled to death. We'll break the monotony of ranching. Oh, well, we did want to go west. This time, I guess it'll be plenty wet. You get any mail for me? No, I have nothing but bills. For you? Well, I'm glad of one thing. I'm just about even with the world. How do you mean you're even with the world with all those bills? Well, oh, just about as many as I don't know. <laughs> oh, alibi. <laughs> well, I'll be back by sundown. All right. Here, I'll drop him off the barn as you go by, will you? <laughs> Better for you, honey. I'm Aunt Margaret. Did Dusty and Dave come back with you? Oh, well, they'll be along pretty soon. Say, I'm beginning to believe that you're in love with both those boys. Father, how could you? <laughs> Where do they all come from? Boss, you call? Some mail for you. Hey, how come you get so much mail? Plenty, big family. Father, he have 20 sons. All sons have 10. Fifteen, maybe twenty children. Plenty big family. <laughs> that isn't a family, that's a whole settlement. Do you write to them all? I write one letter, make plenty copies. <laughs> what you need is a printing press. We like him one very much. Well, you save your money and then you can buy yourself one. But you better get back in the kitchen there. The boys will be along pretty soon and they'll be powerful hungry. Make it plenty good. Yeah. That isn't the truck alibi described. My eyesight's getting bad. 
It's heading straight for Hidden Valley. Yeah, and if it gets there at that speed, we'll be hunting straight for a month. Let's head them off. Fine, how do you do? Come on, let's get it out of here. Hey, what's the idea of this? This is open range land, mister, and we figured you're driving too fast. We don't want any stock killed. Now, take it easy, Dave. Let me handle them. Get up your hands. Now, come on. Now, get down off them horses. Now you start cleaning up this mess. That guy run into something. Get down off of that horse and don't touch that rifle. So put him in the truck. I ain't a hanker for no ride. Shut up. You got into this and now you're going to stay in it. Not very long. Stop those guns. I said drop them, mister. You better start hurting, Alibi. It's the first time I ever heard of coyotes. Get a rope. We gotta deliver them somewhere. It'll be a pleasure. <laughs> Let's lock them in the garage. Good. Get rolling. Use my rope to hang yourself. Well, that'll hold them till we need them. Let's have a look at that stuff. What's going on out there? Boys, come back. Bring plenty of friends. Why, there's a truck in the yard. Let's go and see. That's funny. Rifles and dynamite. I wonder what he figured he's doing with all this stuff. Well, it wouldn't be for any good. Hey, these rifles are made in Japan. Japan? Mm-hmm. You know if that truck's had a load of rifles in it every time he's seen it, Dave? Well, they could arm every enemy alien in the country. Right. Well, be a pigeon-toed centipede. Alibi, you better get over to Captain Anders and tell him what happened right away. All right, I'll take the station wagon. <laughs> beep, beep. Oh, no, you don't. Well, why don't I get it? Because you can't drive any better than a low-code steer. The last time you drove it, you smashed two headlights and a fender. Yeah. Well, my foot slipped that time. Well, slip your foot into a stirrup and get to Camp Morgan, Alibi. Well, okay. I'll get back as fast as I can. 
Hey, alibi! Keep your mind on your work! What are you buckaroos doing? Fixing for war? We just put in a war. Who'll be fighting? Farmers, boss. The same gang that stampeded alibi strays. And we got them all locked up nice and safe in the garage. I haven't the faintest idea what you boys are talking about. And I don't think Dad has either. Well, I'm blessed if I have. Well, go ahead, Dusty. Tell them. Well, when we saw this here truck going lickety-split for Hidden Valley, well, that was when the war began. Mm -hmm. And after Dave got the drop on him, why, it wasn't any job at all to hurt him into the car. It was short and snappy. You'd have enjoyed it. I always miss the good things. Well, we'll take care of these hombres army style. We're all doing guard duty tonight. Four-hour shifts for each of us. I'll take the first one. Sleep, Davy. I've been hearing funny noises. Oh, you'll be all right. What? Why didn't you cut me in on it? Well, I didn't want to bother you. I'd like to get in on these things, too, you know. I... Oh. Take your time. Horses all saddled. Goopy, think of everything. Horses, go, where truck no go. Those range busters got that load of rifles and our explosives. Huh? But they don't know what we have stored away. But they will find out big things. Hey, this is foolish. Tad's on guard. Well, I'm still worried. for some exercise before breakfast. You're gonna get it, come on.
alibi? Hello, Captain. Well, who's this little gargoyle? Did you hear that? He called me little. Well, now don't get sore, Elmer. This is Elmer Sneezeweed. Elmer, this is Captain Anders. How are you, Elmer? How do? Captain, I could have been in the Army if it hadn't been for my feet. What's the matter, Flat? No, cold. They want me to be an officer. Well, why weren't you? Oh, I wanted to see some of the fighting. But my old man was an officer. Well, what's that make you? Officer's mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope our enemy agents are as easy to handle if they're brought back. Oh, don't worry. Their escape is only temporary. I hope they're caught. Mr. Richards, Alibi explained you'd had some trouble at your ranch. That's why we stopped by and brought you along. Tell me about it. Well, there's nothing that I can put a finger on exactly, but I'd sure like to take a look at these men. Oh, the boys will have them back before we finish breakfast. There won't be no breakfast. No breakfast? You just send Cookie to me. I can't. He's bamboozed. What? His room's all mussed up. Found these letters half burned in the cook stove. What do you make of these, Captain? A letterhead of the Japanese Tourist Bureau. We know that's an espionage agency. Mm -hmm. And these are all postmarked Japan. Why, well, he told me he was a Filipino boy. He fooled you. He's a Jap. I think that explains the escape of your prisoners and his disappearance. You mean we've been harboring a spy? It looks that way. Well, that sounds like the boys are back. There they are. I told you they'd get them. What'll happen to those men, Captain? I'll turn them over to the FBI. Our job is soldiering. Conroy, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we get to ride those horses you're shipping to the Philippines. How's that? Well, don't tell the boys, but I think I'll be in... Hello, Dave. Want to sit down? Only four more days. Aren't you excited about your trip? I can't make up my mind, Dallas. Mainly account of you. Sweet of you, Dave, if you feel that way. Because I need you. Do you really mean that? You can do something for me. Something terribly important. I'll do anything for you. Then look after Dusty for me. But he's not as self-reliant as you are. He isn't? I don't want anything to happen to him. You don't want anything to happen to him? Oh, I guess I understand. I knew you would, Dave. But please don't ever tell him what I've said. I ain't likely to. Why, that's Dusty. Yeah, that's Dusty. Dusty. Oh, hello there, Dallas. May I sit down with you? Why, sure. This is an unexpected pleasure. <laughs> Only four more days. Aren't you thinking about your trip? Well, I'm not so sure, Dallas. Maybe I'm thinking about you too much. I'm so glad, Dusty. If you really feel that way. I've felt that way ever since I first met you. Then you do something for me? Something terribly important? Anything you say, Dallas. Look after Dave for me. Huh? He's not as self-reliant as you are. Oh. No, he isn't. No, and I don't want anything to happen to him. I'll sure see to it, Dallas. I know you would, Dusty. But please don't tell him what I've asked you. That's another thing you can be sure of. Better come on, Dave. Dusty's going to sing. Sing? I thought he'd finished. I'm a leaving Cheyenne. Goodbye, old thing. I'm a leaving Cheyenne. Leaving Cheyenne. I'm off to Montana. Goodbye, old thing. I'm a leaving Cheyenne. Old paint's a good pony. He paces when he can. Goodbye, my little pony. What are you doing to those two boys? I just want to be sure they look out for each other. I thought you were after some of your monkey shines. You want to be ashamed. I love them both. Yeah. 
I guess that's the trouble. of a really perfect day. Dave? Yeah, Dusty? How do you feel about going away? Oh, I don't know. Got a bigger job in my hands than I expect. Huh. You should know the job I have. It's gonna be hard work loading those horses on the boat. Sure is. Night. Night. Gosh, I hope there's room enough for us on board. Oh, you and I have a very nice cabin. Poor Alibi has to sleep with the horses. Well, if the horses don't kick, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> You could have knocked me down with a feather when I found you here ahead of us. <laughs> yeah. Seems like only yesterday we were in Texas together, Captain. The Army sure works fast. You've done a good job, man. Thank you. I reckon we'll mosey around and see the sights tonight. Go ahead. Have a good time. First, you'll eat. I'm star. So am I. How can we order? We don't talk Filipino. Well, the sign for being hungry is the same in any language. <laughs> Come on, let's mosey. See you later, Captain. Bye. Attention. Elmer. And Eve. So long, Captain.
Hello, boys. Oh, you have Hello. a nice table for you. Waiter. Like. You fellas know Home on the Range? Oh, yes. Well, well, that's swell. Would you mind playing it? I see. Cookie. Well, what in thunder could he be doing here? Let's find out. We're heading for trouble. This is a job for the FBI. You're right, Alibi. But if we took time out to notify him, Cookie could be on his way to Tokyo. We can take him over to Army headquarters and let them handle him. Mila's waiting upstairs. You wait here. Probably have to go after you. Go ahead, and we'll keep our eye on the other one. Maybe we'll be lucky and get it. Yeah, Miller. The plan for your trip has been taken care of as usual. Are you ready to leave? I am always ready. You will receive a phone call. The man's name is Ken Richards. Ken Richards. With him, you will pick up our work. Fine. I'll go now. You notify Tokyo that I am joining our agent.
Well, if it isn't Cookie. You know, we all wondered what happened to you. What are you doing here? Well, uh, believe it or not, I dropped two cents and rolled right under these curtains. You heard what was said. Oh, yeah, I heard, and very interesting, too. appreciation for us rounding up a herd of spies. They caught him all but Miller and he got away. Yeah, and he's the most important one. Davy, are you sure you heard the name Ken Richards up there in that room? Certainly. He's tied up in it some way. Miller's taking a trip. Hey. I've got a hunch Miller's on his way to meet Richards. I know this much. Their plan is to dynamite our vital harbors. Better tell that to the FBI. How can we? I heard them all right, but who's to prove it? Well, we started this job and we're gonna finish it. We gotta head straight back to Texas and check on Ken Richards. And corral him Texas style. You said it. Hello, Captain. Yeah. Hello, how are you? I'll Big Under Army protection doesn't permit you to wreck everything in sight. That was disgraceful behavior. Unfortunately, there's nothing the Army Command can do about it. You may go, Corporal. Confidentially, that was a swell job. The way you routed out those spies, and now they're all in the hands of the FBI. Oh, well, that's swell. We was kind of wondering why that would land us in jail. <laughs> yeah, we never been in jail before. <laughs> Only twice. <laughs> well, we must maintain discipline. And the way you wrecked that cafe, it was a work of art. <laughs> well, I reckon now, Captain, that we've had our excitement, maybe we could be heading for home, huh? <laughs> Why, sure, I came here to release you. <laughs> We're sorry about the cafe, Captain. We're sure glad Cookie isn't talking to Tokyo anymore. <laughs> Wait here, Alibi, just in case. I got you. Come in. Hi, Mr. Richard. Hi, boys. Uh, be seated. 
Well, uh, did you have a pleasant trip? We had a mighty educated trip. That's fine. Uh, tell me about it. We met some friends of yours. Friends of mine? Mm-hmm. Cookie. Mr. Conroy's Jeff Cook. Remember him? <laughs> Is this uh, some sort of a game? Could be. Cookie had some friends that knew you, too. In fact, one of them was coming to... Maybe you boys better make yourselves a little plainer. All right. We will. We're on to your game, Richards. And it's losing one. Because you and Miller are not going to destroy our harbors or anything else. I reckon you boys never should have done any traveling. Put your hand back on that desk. <laughs> Quick, isn't he? Now, coming back to that sabotage deal. You're smart, you forget about that. And lay down that gun. Get the other gun, Richard. Get over there. The boys just returned from Bad Tan. They're very well informed. And there's only one thing to do. Maybe you're forgetting you're in a civilized country. People vanish even in this country. Alibi. Did they get Elmer? Never laid a hand on him. Who's Elmer? Don of Bluffman. Get your hands up. Look out! Cotton myself. How about I carry us a pail of water, will you? Well, how do you expect me to carry it in my teeth? <laughs> well, here, I'll untie it for you. <laughs> oh, leave him that way. He'll be just as helpful. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> it's quite an account here of how you boys corralled those spies discovered all of that dynamite hidden on Richard's place. He sure prevented a disaster. And just imagine, not wanting a medal for it. Stingy. That's why I never get the funny paper. <laughs> well, who's going to drive me to church? I'm just the man for it. Enjoy your trip? Wasn't that gentlemanly? <laughs> Never mind, I'll... We interrupt this program to bring you a news flash from the War Department, Washington, D.C. Pearl Harbor, Hawaii has been bombed by Japanese planes. No further news is available at this time, but there's no doubt that Japan has started actual warfare. For further details, key tune to this one. Well, that settles it, Mr. Conroy. I guess I'll be right. That goes for me, too. I'll be a pigeon toed centipede if they're going to leave me behind. That's fine, boys. And this time, we're all the way to Tokyo. We'd better hurry. We don't want to be late for church. Thanks, folks. We'll be seeing you. <laughs> 